Hi everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another installment of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Facebook fans. Today's question comes from Lisa, and Lisa wants to know if there's a way to get rid of shadows from a flash behind people's heads. Well, Lisa, of course there is. Let me show you how. Thanks for sending in your picture. I'm going to use it actually to demo the feature so you'll know exactly how to do it on your photo. First thing we want to do is zoom in to where the shadow problem is behind your guys' heads here. So we're going to use the zoom tool. That's this tool right up here in the top left corner. So let me just click on my zoom tool. Come over here and zoom in with a couple clicks just so we can really get in detailed on what we're working on. Okay, next thing that we want to do is create a new layer. Over here on the right hand side is our layers panel. And this little icon right here is how we create a new layer. Go ahead and click on the create a new layer and that's going to create a new layer on top of your original background image. Think of layers as just stacks of photos on top of each other that can either contain picture information or not. In this case our layer is empty so we can completely see through it. What we want to do is with this layer 1 selected come over to the left again and find our clone stamp tool. That's this tool right here and just click on the clone stamp tool. Then come down, open up our tool options. Yours might already be open, but if they're not, just click on the tool options button and our tool options open. All you need to do here is check sample all layers. Make sure that's checked. We don't need our tool options open anymore, so we'll go ahead and close that. And the way the clone stamp tool works is first you define what part of your picture you'd like to stamp somewhere else. So as an example, if I wanted to stamp uh, your right eye everywhere, I would move my clone stamp tool over your right eye. I'd hold down the Alt on Windows or Option key on Mac and click. And what that does is tells the clone stamp tool that's the part of the image I want to copy. And now you can see as I move the clone stamp tool everywhere, your eye is about to be painted. And if I click, it'll paint it right there. So that's not what we want to do. Let's do undo a couple times. What we really want to do is paint some of this wall in on top of the shadows. So what I do is put my clone stamp tool over the area that I want to copy, hold the Alt or Option key down, click, and now you can see where I move. I've got those pixels that I'm about to paint. And what I'm doing is painting on this layer on top. So I don't have to be real careful because I'm not really editing your photo. I'm going to just go around and paint around the edges. Uh, every now and then I might want to let go. Uh, sometimes I might need to resample. So if it starts painting colors I don't really want, just click again, resample, and start painting again. So as I mentioned, I don't need to be real careful because I'm not actually painting on your picture. I'm, I'm adding this bit to this layer on top. So I just kind of keep sampling, keep it painting, uh, do some more here, sample, paint some more up here, that kind of thing. Just really get rid of the shadow. Uh, maybe sample up above and paint down as well. I, of course, can make my brush smaller or bigger. Uh, I can either do that in the tool options, change the size of my brush. I might want to make it smaller, uh, or I can press the right and left bracket key. That's actually a keyboard shortcut I use a lot. Left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger. So make a small brush, maybe do a little more sampling, a little more painting uh, in here to really get this shadow gone. Now, as you can see, I've painted over part of the picture that I actually don't want to paint on. If I turn off layer one over here in my layers panel, that little eyeball, controls the visibility of my layer. If I click the eyeball, that layer is hidden. If I click the eyeball again, that layer is shown. So I can actually hide the background layer and you can see the painting that the clone stamp tool has done for me on layer one. Since layer one is above your background layer, then that paint is actually covering up the image below. So the next step that I want is to use something called a layer mask to hide some of that stuff that I painted uh, that I don't really want. I could erase it, of course, but once you learn layer masks, uh, a whole world of possibility opens up in Photoshop Elements. So let's do a real quick usage of layer masks here to teach you how those work. So this icon right up here in the top is how we add a layer mask. So with layer one selected, 
just click on Add Layer Mask and you can see it's added this little square right here. Now the way layer masks work is if I paint on them with black, the part of that layer that I paint black over in the layer mask is hidden, and if I paint with white, that layer is completely shown. So as an example, if I hide that background layer so we can just see what's on layer one, if I go grab my brush, make sure your foreground color is black, and I paint with black, that layer is hidden. Now it's not really gone, but it's because I've painted with black on the layer mask. If instead of painting with black, I switch my foreground color to white, and then I paint again on the layer mask, I can bring that layer back. So I can very easily erase and restore uh, bits of any layer that I want. So let's show your background layer again. Let's maybe even zoom in a little more. And now on that layer mask, I want to do some painting with black and my brush. And I'm going to make my brush small because I want to just erase some of that layer. But I'm not really erasing it, I'm just hiding it with the mask. So I can clean up there, I can clean up here a little bit, uh, I can clean up down around here and really get the perfect blending of that extra paint that I painted on layer one to the image below. So I can alternate between painting with black on the mask and painting with white, right? So I want a little more white here, I want to fix that up a little bit. In fact, uh, the uh, the clock on the wall or whatever that was. I don't want that covered up by layer one. I actually want to see it. So let's come over here and switch to black and then even make our brush a little smaller and I can erase layer one where that X is and bring it back. And again, using layer masks, I don't have to worry about being real careful because I simply switch between black and white to either paint in the layer or erase out the layer. Another shortcut, instead of coming over here to click between black and white, if instead I just tap my X key on my keyboard, it will exchange my foreground color and my background color. So if I paint with white, I can show layer one, so I can clean up right around this X a little bit. If I paint, if I hit X and paint with black, again, just remember uh, that will hide that layer. So pretty quickly, I can do that. Let's fix, oops, I painted with white. I wanted to paint with black. Again, the beauty of a layer mask is if I make a mistake, it's easy to recover. And maybe clean up the edge here just a little bit. All right, so there we go. Uh, as an example, let me clean this other shadow over here up again. We'll repeat the process real quickly. Uh, so again, my clone stamp tool, that's this tool over here on the left, looks like a little stamp. Pick my clone stamp tool. Uh, go to an area that I want to copy from, hold my Alt or Option key down, uh, sample that area, paint in some of that wall to cover up the shadow. And again, I don't have to be real perfect. You know, the better I do the first time, of course, the less cleanup I have to do. But um, if I want to just do real quick and I make a mistake and I paint too much, I can always come back, click on my layer mask, paint either black or white to bring back something that I accidentally painted over. So hopefully that's enough to get you the idea. Uh, let me double click on the hand tool to zoom back out so your image fits. I can also double click on the magnifying glass so that it zooms such that it's a one to one ratio. And again, if I want to hide all that painting I did, I can just click on the little eyeball and so you can see there's your original image, and then if I show that layer that I've painted on top, uh, the shadows are gone. Hope that helps, Lisa, and thanks for asking the question. Take care.